Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Now that I've started my JAXA RP1 career as well, that one in an advanced state with advanced technology, more befitting 1970 when we also started this one, but this one we started with 1950 technology. Now that I've started that save as well, uh, I will have to specify that this is not my only RP1 career. Uh, there's that one too, but we are continuing this one as well, and we'll see how they both go and compare and contrast. Uh, but anyway, we are starting off with the Maya spacecraft, uh, which I messed up the wheels on with the previous attempt. Now we fixed that and we are going to attempt to launch it again without crew. It is just a flight test. So we'll probably light the rocket engines for a little bit, if we get to that part. Well, the wheels look all right. Okay. <laughs> Today the throttle isn't working. Okay, fine. Uh, it's a lot easier to fly with the throttle working, but okay. The joystick still works. It's just the throttle that's weird. Anyway, ignition. We still got to accelerate really slowly, or... Now that the wheels are fixed, I think it'll go a little bit better, but it's still not great on accelerating. Oh, we're carrying the full load of hydrogen and oxygen, though. Um, we were not supposed to be carrying the full load of hydrogen and oxygen. I think uh, we might light the engines after all. Yeah, I didn't mean for it to top off the fuel. Okay, oh, oh no, without the body flap, it's not gonna be balanced. Eek. Oh, oh no. That is not a maneuver you want your plane to do. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Yeah, we can't take off with full fuel. I didn't notice that. Um, I don't know if flight testing this is the best idea. But, I guess we made progress? At least there's no Kerbals on board. They gotta be watching this like those Atlas launches that the Mercury 7 watched. It's a bit expensive to keep building these things. Maybe I should have better jet engines. We can't even build this right now. If you put bigger... Jet engines, it's heavier overall. Maybe we should just use the rocket engines to fly. How much do the jet engine pods help? Ooh. Yeah, that's a big difference, isn't it? I think I'm just gonna put canards. And we'll skip the jet engines and we'll use the rocket engines. They're a little bit high, though, for this purpose. Hmm. They're all, they're both connected to the controller. Well, if we tilt the controller, that's going to be really interesting. Roughly speaking, that might be good enough. Uh, it's clipping the body flap, though. We do need the body flap. Canard can't get in the way of the RCS ports. And we must check our transonic stuff. Though... Really, having transonic drag is good for this. Doesn't look like the canard helped much at all, but it definitely actually hurt that bump a little bit, so... I don't remember this bump being here. I think I increased the size of the landing gear and that did that. Okay, so this is how it is right now, and then as the fuel drains... The center of lift is the uh, center of mass is still really far ahead. It really changes quite a lot. We're more interested in it being right for coming down than going up. I mean, this looks bad, but when we're on the top of the rocket, it's not going to matter a whole lot. By the time this uses the engines, it's got to be in space, and we'll be draining the fuel in space anyway. 
so it's okay for it to start like this as long as it ends up correct and this is still not exactly what I want but it's better we need the body flap there to protect the engines. I have no idea whether they're protecting the engines enough. The RCS ports in those tanks might blow up right there because I've moved the wing forward. Thinking about re-entry, of course. Um, maybe you can move them up a bit. So, my NJ for no jet. And we'll just use rocket fuel and see how it goes. Ten ignitions. No throttling, though. Alright. That's the NJ. We don't have to upgrade anything. We can barely build one. So, we'll build one. I'm looking seriously at the Mark 1 lander cabin as an option for EVA, though. That's all we need for this one. We're still nowhere near where we need to do desperation moves, but... Gotta think about it. We're more desperate on the far side landing, and this one is not paying us much, so we should probably get it done. Speaking of far side landing, we should be doing the Looney 3 right about now. Time warp stop because there's insufficient funds to continue with rollout. We can't we can't go into negative at all. Apparently not. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, it, it seems ready to launch. I guess we don't have to pay extra for that. We're ma we're making money. I mean, it's just not fast enough. All right, here we go to the moon for a far side landing. SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. And launch. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Okay, getting ready for staging. And staging. Second engine lit. Okay, fairings. Alright, hydrolock stage is next. And stage it. We have two engines. Currently at 1,600 data units for these engines. Uh, the wonders of the dual engine Centaur, which is basically what this is, adjusted for our launcher. Adjusted for the fact that we're using these RZ-20s and the launcher that we've got. This is basically a dual engine Centaur. I was tempted to make the rocket 3.05 meters, so it'd be more exact, but uh, I just went with the 3 meters to make it simpler. And, yep, I can't shut down with the throttle. Okay, shut down. And we have enough for the moon, as intended. So, no problems. Relative inclination, very mild. And we have switched to communicating with, uh... Okay, where do I have to hover to find that out? Ah, yeah, with one of the geosats. So, that is working as planned. Okay, that approach looks fine. About four days is what I want. And we'll see how the communications are once we get over to where we need to burn, because some of the satellites will be moving. We're communicating through New Zealand. That's not going to last for very long. Um, that seems like a stretch. Uh, it's actually not that far away. Okay, but who else is around here? Our Leo sats have gotten all clumped together. Uh, they're all right here. Um, in theory, they should be able to relay. Yeah. And the uh, Geosat there can relay. So I think we're in good shape. It's not a very long burn. And ignition. 
all's well. In theory, if we lost communication right now and couldn't stop the burn, that wouldn't actually be a problem. We could correct that with the next stage without jeopardizing the mission at all, but I expect that we'll have comps just fine. Okay, 1.4 left, let's see what that looks like. Uh, why don't we just decouple and then use the RCS up there to figure things out. Separation. We'll have to see when we get there. That might be a little bit far from communication from Earth, but by, uh, after four days that might be alright. Okay, so it looks like a good pass. We don't need any other corrections. Shall we get a vanity shot? There we go. Vanity shot. So, will our communication satellite, satellite around the moon still be helping us out? Oh, well, we've got communication with something over there, but not that satellite yet. So that satellite we wouldn't have communication with until we got within 50,000 kilometers. Oh, we've picked it up. So it's still working. No guarantee after all these months. Location within 80 degrees of the far side of the moon. Capture burn ignition. That one might be a little bit too far on this side. I want it over on that side. I don't think it'll get there. We'll have to probably do an orbit first before it's in the right position. If it's on this side, there's a risk that it might go behind the moon from the Earth while we're trying to do our landing. Okay, well, I've let it be a little bit lopsided, but we'll go around. Will it tell us within 80 degrees of the far side? Or do we have to be landed for it to tell us that? Okay, so anywhere around here will be fine. Oh, it looks like that's considered location, the far side. Hmm, why that location? I don't know. That seems pretty close to the near side by comparison. Okay, so right now that satellite is blocked. So that's why we're not doing the landing. We'll do another retrograde burn at periapsis here. And ignition. Hopefully this will make for a nicer descent than last time. So now that satellite's over there. By the time we get to where we need to go, it shouldn't be blocked by the moon from communicating. Well, we seem to be relayed through it. The contract says this is within 80 degrees. So don't want to land in that crater up there. Would that be alright? We've got the extra delta V. I think I can tilt my orbit even now. It's asking a lot though. But it's got the best chance of being a different biome. It says there's lowlands right now too. Quite a drastic maneuver. Somewhat risky. Yeah, but I wonder why that far side marker is there instead of directly opposite the Earth. It's weird. Maybe that's the limit, I don't know. Okay, that's good enough. It's certainly a fine pass. Got a line to that Looney Zero somehow. The map view is a lot slower than the flight view because of all the vessels that it has to track. Anyway, uh, surface negative. Just aiming for that crater right there. Hopefully it's Lowlands. With this setup with the lighter controller, the upper stage actually has a better thrust weight ratio than this stage right now. But not better than when this stage is about to be done. But it's pretty close. So that... And those are the lunar thrust weight ratios. So that we don't have to worry as much about the suicide burn countdown as I did with the direct impact versions. But I'll still give myself some margin, of course. 
Okay, well, it's varying. Well, there's major craters, actually, so that's good. Line seems like it'll be good on landing, so... And we've also got the Looney Zero, but I don't know if it's uh, communicating back home. Alright, let's get those here and stage. Okay, well, a little bit early. As expected. Okay. Our other stage has impacted. A bit more forthright and approach than we took before. I'll manually try and control it now. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, our RCS is not quite powerful enough to actually slow us down here. Probably not too far off though. Okay, we're down. We've landed. Things are running. Power is... well, it's okay enough. We can shut down the avionics. And, well, it's still draining a little bit, but not too bad. Okay, we got it. Far side lunar landing. Let's get the rest of the signs. Hmm. Alright. Well, we've done that. There's gotta be lowlands somewhere around here. I guess we can try it. Okay, well, we'll just... All right, Jeb. Let's just go in this direction and see. Um... Which direction looks like less of the crater? Um, oh, this way, maybe. We'll see. I don't know if we're gonna get to Lowlands. I was hoping this area would be Lowlands between this crater here and that, but... Uh, I don't think so. Landing guidance would be able to tell us, probably. It's all major craters. We're already past the point where we can safely land. Oh, there's loads. Well, 71 meters per second isn't going to be good enough. It's a hill. <laughs> Are we really going to be hitting lowlands or not? It says Midlands now. Okay, now it's Lowlands. Uh... Okay, complete destruction. Anyway, worth a try. We did what we had to do. We got the contract filled. Let's go back to Space Center. And uncrewed lunar surface exploration, which we still have some time on, but not a whole lot. Uh, we, we're dropping about 100,000 there. Hmm. Let's see. Crude lunar exploration we're not ready for. Mars, we haven't even gotten into orbit around Mars or Venus. So I guess there's not a whole lot of reason to try and rush things. We'll wait until the deadline to finish it off. But at least we got it done. This is what we need to focus on now. Crude orbit 2003. And, you know, most of the money's right here. So we'll think about that. Okay, next up we have to pay attention to our Venus missions, which are arriving at Venus. But before we do that, I think we should take a look at what we're unlocking here. I wanted mature capsules. That might be a better bet for the EVAs. We could use the Mark 1-3 command pod for EVAs instead of our space plane. I still want to do the space plane, but just to get the EVA the, as a backup option for the EVAs that might work, and also going to the moon. 
So we're probably going to, it requires all that, but we're researching both of those. So we should be able to research that. So we've got that queued up. Somebody asked about nuclear. Basically, I would go up the nuclear ladder if I already have the science available to get something good. And, you know, I'm pointing at the good thing. <laughs> so, um, uh, but that's only five ignitions, but still. Um, why, why they only have 10 ignitions? Uh, this is the engine that I used on my pair. This wouldn't be too bad. I object to the 10 ignitions, though. So, yeah. The, uh, the Nerva 2 has 60 ignitions. If this had more ignitions, that would be good. If it also had 60. I don't know why it would have 10 in particular. I don't like the model, though. I'd probably bring in my own model and just make sure that the stats were all the same. But, I mean, it's really expensive to unlock. That's a million. We've never seen that kind of money. So I would have to make sure that I have all the science and money that I need in order to actually use these things. I see no downside to getting more science technology, so we'll start off with that. And life support. Um, I mean, that's called early life support. This is called... Uh, we can get the regular lithium hydroxide scrubber, the one that I've already got installed in the, in the space plane, the Maya spacecraft. So we should probably just do that. This life support in ISRU doesn't even have anything in it. <laughs> this doesn't have anything in it. That doesn't have anything in it. But it does uh, have these uh, def uh, different... Well, this doesn't really doesn't have anything. This has vacuum scrubber to scrubber. Advanced vacuum scrubber. Why are we scrubbing vacuum? Uh, and then this finally has some interesting things to the chemical plant. And Sabatier process. Wow, that's really far up, huh? Okay, but we don't have enough science to do anything more. So we've got science is queued for the foreseeable future. Let's go to the Venus Orbiter missions now. Here we are with the EVE 3 probe about to enter Venus SOI. And we see that we have, well, a 42% signal, 42-58. And now we've entered Venus SOI. Um, that's a little bit worrisome uh, for our Mars mission, I feel. This is the stretch that it's doing right now, which is not trivial. I mean, it's not like we're close to Earth right now. But Mars gets really far away from Earth. So hopefully the antenna planning was right. But hmm, this uh, gives me pause to some extent as to whether we have enough antenna on the Mars missions. But for now, this is okay, and it is running various things that will take some time, and let's see about capture. Okay, that looks like it has a better chance of comms at periapsis, though probably not too far along. Eventually Venus will block it. And it seems like the delta V required to get into a lower orbit is not as much as a... Well, okay. I was looking at like 50,000 kilometers before, so... Yep, we can get into a good orbit. I want the high over science as well, so we might as well keep it like that. A nice two-day orbit. The other mission is already entering Venus SY, but we'll pay attention to it later. Okay, well, there's Venus. And I think we'll start the capture now. I'll be safer. Okay, that looks good enough. That is going to satisfy that. And while we're still active, let's make sure the sun is going to recharge us once we get into daylight again. Well, it's happy. We've got the Venus Orbit contract done already. 
and we will shut down avionics here so it can just do science and certainly here in daylight it's got the connection it's got the power it's got the power uh and it is running the science okay let's focus on the other one this one will try to put it into a polarish orbit to get different biomes. Otherwise, it's got the same science. So. Right now, it's sort of inclined. I think we'll make it more inclined. Okay, we'll go like that. And ignition. Okay, looks good to me. Onward. We may be getting a relay from Eve 3. Actually, uh, this sort of polar approach will eventually have us being blocked by Venus, so I went too far to that side. And Venus will also block us from Eve 3, so we we'll probably should capture here. Now, Eve's atmosphere is at 145 kilometers, so that's not too bad. We could go lower on the periapsis by way of this burn and still be okay. And doing the burn early tends to bring the periapsis down. Okay, we have captured. I think I'll leave it there. It's a little bit higher than the other one, but probably safer. Let's just get set up for the sun. Oop, there's Venus. And those things are running here as well. Different biomes though. And shutting down avionics. Alright, so two Venus orbiters. And we'll get some science out of them. And we've fulfilled the contract. And I think I'll wrap it up here. So, with that... Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.